I have never seen a show get so many delays with tomorrow being the one year where Disney released the intro of Primo's that unleashed the backlash. And with this being the third delay, I really feel bad for the people working on this show. And I'm not really against this show like other people did last year because we haven't even got one episode from this show and at this point we rather ju we we should actually judge this show when it comes to the first episode even though that Disney is trying everything in order to fix the problems when it comes to the when it comes to the intro but if we never get the first episodes from this show, then I'm pretty sure that this would have actually been cancelled. And it's honestly rare for a show to actually get cancelled when it hasn't been re when it hasn't released its first episodes yet. But if this show does became does become a thing towards the end of this year or in 2025. I am still going to compare the first episode to the Loud House episode from Season 2, Relative Chaos, no matter what. So, to fill up this last upload slot before Summer Palooza 5 Steven Universe Marathon arrives, I'm still going to do an analysis video on comparing two episodes, only this time it's going to be Disney Channel shows, which wouldn't make a difference considering that the original plans was to compare a Disney Channel, Disney Channel show to a Nickelodeon show, but considering that this episode from Harley's On It got me interested, along with the fact that there's another episode that is similar to that, this is honestly a gem out of nowhere for me, and this marks the third time that I'm doing uh, an analysis video on comparing two episodes, but at the same time, you people probably miss me comparing Loud House vs. Casagante's projects, do you? In, in An Impostor is Born from Harley's On It, Harley and Scott encountered Kelsey File, who is a pop star singer, who also looks exactly like ha Harley, except with the long hair and being slightly taller, and she agrees to Harley to switch lives slash positions in order to have Harley spend the life as a pop star while Kelsey doesn't really do much in this episode and only appeals towards the end of the episode, which is kind of disappointing. The episode that has the same premise is in Pop Star from Big City Greens. Well, Cricket knows that Zill and Brax looks exactly exactly like him the only difference is is that the two never interact unlike the two double gano characters from harley's on it but they still switch lives with zill and brax taking the life of cricket with cricket taking the life of zill and brax on being extremely popular the harley's episode got me so invested that i used one of the screenshots for one of my Patreon tier followers, mainly partnership people, because as much as this episode was somewhat disappointing, I still found enjoyment and it gave me the ideal of comparing it to the Big City Greens episode, which does this double game no slash imposter story much more better, not to mention entertaining. But to be fair, the Harley's episode showcases of what it's like on doing the stunts and commercials as a pop star. Holly does the stunts and commercials that really got her really stressed out, while Cricket in his episode is basically losing fame and fortune because people around him see him as Zillin, because obviously he looks similar to Zillin, and Zillin is a much more popular scene in comparison to Kelsey, which really shows. If anything, for how over the top Bixie Greens is in comparison to Harley's on it, in a way it is entertaining, but it's mainly the fact that we get to see the point of view of Zillin and Cricket when they switch places, even though that they never interact up until the very end of the episode, but 
mostly briefly. When it comes to Jenica, who is the manager of Kelsey, not to mention her mother, in all honesty, if we ended up having that in the Big City Greens episode, it wouldn't be as entertaining and for how they really wanted to showcase on how toxic and really deranged a fan base is when it comes to girls over obsessing a pop star is honestly what makes this slightly better in a different direction when it comes to Harley trying to understand how difficult it is to be a pop star with so many things going on. Because, because you can't be able to avoid advertisements when you become a famous pop star. And judging of how Kelsey doesn't get screen time in this in comparison to Zillin, I really feel like that if we just see her having her own screen time, it wouldn't be entertaining. So they probably went with this direction, but it is still disappointing that they could have done. They they still could have done it with something interesting in this own show's writing in comparison to Big City Green's writing. The biggest differences between two episodes or two shows in general is that Harley's on its pacing is slow, not super slow, but slow. While in Big City Green's pacing, it's fast, especially with the two plots going on. If they went back to Kelsey's character when it comes to what she's doing in the meantime, I'm pretty sure that the pacing will have been a lot more slower and the interactions that she has towards other characters wouldn't be entertaining. Granted, they would have taken a shot to make it entertaining, but judging of how they really wanted to showcase Harley's life when it comes to being in Kelsey's Kelsey Files position as a pop star. Cricket would have been exposed as an imposter, judging of how that he can't sing in comparison to Zillin. And judging of how that the second half of the episode makes the first half of the episode showcases of how much being really famous is really a bad thing, but in a different scenario. Harley will probably have the entire world in danger when it comes to her staying as a pop star while singing in front of so many people, with her having the same voice as Kelsey since they're both voiced by the same voice actor. But let's be real, judging the fact that I did saw a clip or a screenshot with subtitles that in the final episode that the list doesn't control Holly's life, Holly controls her own, her own life, then I'm pretty sure she would have taken that way more legitimately in this scenario. But on the plus side, she doesn't have a stalker unlike Zillin, who, whose stalker is Amaryllis, who is highly obsessed with Zillin to the point that she really fantasizes him. This kind of showcases of how the Big City Greens episode is really entertaining, but it also showcases that if Holly has a stalker, then it would have been a completely different story considering that Holly is a girl and Cricket is a boy. When it comes to the subplot, well not really much of a subplot since it's integral to the main plot, well Zillin is actually part of the family that Bill doesn't even notice. Tilly tries to crack the code on the fact that Zillin isn't Cricket and is actually an imposter who is not her brother. But judging of how Bill isn't seeing the difference whatsoever and the fact that he can care less all the while that Tilly is just losing her mind on the fact that Cricket isn't really with them. I'm not the only one who will have thought that Zillin without any bodyguards would feel afraid or stressed out when it comes to fangirls piling up around him or crowding him to the point that he can't be able to catch a break. Which, for me personally, judging of how quick it felt that when it comes to the second half of the episode, all the while his mother comes along when it comes to the fame and fortune, Zillin's life as a pop star is a lot more different than 
literally everyone else's pop stars' lives when it comes to shows slash cartoons. Because if we actually saw his parents, like when we saw Kelsey's parents from the Harley's on it episode, then I'm pretty sure that they would have been a lot more overjoyed and way more supportive when it comes to Zillin's popularity. But again, since that we never see Zillin and Cricket interact aside from a brief scene which gets interrupted by Amaryllis who learns that she got the wall on Zillin the entire time and ended up getting arrested which led to Zillin going back to his pop star life. It kind of makes me feel like that they only did this episode for the sake of doing this imposter doppelganger plot for the sake of entertainment which sums up of what Big City Greens in comparison to other Disney Channel cartoons like Infimia and the Owl House that were airing when this episode aired. The way I see it from the Harley's episode, it made me understand the disappointment, even though I expected more. Like, with the interactions between Harley and Kelsey, all the while that we get to see more of Harley's situation in comparison to Kelsey where we see none of until the final minutes of the episode. And of course the pacing differences. I really feel like that this episode really set my expectations a little high but at the same time I barely set expectations for myself when it comes to episodes like this. I just feel like that this episode would have been slightly better, so I can actually feel some investment when it comes to Harley's on it. Because I've actually been watching episodes lately, and I'm getting close to reaching to the final episode. Even though by this point, I'm not going to be having time to review the final episode of Harley's on it, but... I wasn't even going to plan on reviewing the Big City Greens movie that came out last Friday. It would have been a chance to talk about it if I didn't do Summer Palooza 5 Steven Universe Marathon by dedicating to one cartoon, but at the same time, I'm not really that interested into the movie, and just by this project alone happening at the last minute, it's honestly the best to talk about Big City Greens before the marathon rather than never. Well, until Halloween Mania in October, that is. I guess the biggest saving grace when it comes to the Holly episode is the ending Well, the two actually saying the song that Holly wrote and it's honestly the biggest highlight that really got me invested into watching the episode even though it could have been much more better. It may be a short song but I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a full version of it somewhere in the future and even though that the Big City Greens episode didn't include a lot of interactions when it comes to doppelgangers. Um, this episode's doppelganger execution did it slightly better than I'm hoping that if there is a season 2 in planned, I actually want to see a sequel involving Holly and Kelsey working together in some other capacity. Even though for how grounded this show is, it's mostly unlikely. But then again, we can only hope that this show can at least get a second season, which I'm pretty sure that Primo's won't be able to get a second season when it comes to the delays and it has nothing to do with the backlash. With the Impopstal episode being nearly four and a half years old, it's honestly best that this episode is mostly for entertainment and the other episodes are more important when it comes to when it comes to the direction of characters that invested people since Zillin barely appears and never mentioned again after this episode, at least from what I know. When it comes to Harley's On It, the only episode that I'm planning to review in the future is the Corn Maze episode that Disney advertised it as a Halloween episode and I don't even think that they're gonna be able to make the Halloween episode in time for October this this year, judging of how that the the progress of making these Disney Channel shows are taking much more longer than necessary. But then again, despite spoiling spoiling myself when it comes to the Twitter posters or X posters, which I'm still going to afford Twitter posters. 
is the fact that the ending has a cliffhanger and if this show ended then it's probably gonna be a lot more sad or to the point that it just proves my points that Disney Channel ending shows way too early. This is literally the biggest of them all, even more than the when the Ghost and Mario McGee ended Oreo the Seal. And that show didn't even feel like it was ending, but in this, it's fall proof. But that's a topic for another time. I'm giving the Harleys on it episode a 7 out of 10, while the Big City Greens episode gets a 7.5 out of 10, and when it comes to the following uploads, it's cluttered to show, especially when it comes to the fanfic readings of tomorrow and Saturday, but these next months are going to take a while until we get back to regular scheduling, as if last year's schedule of Summer Palooza 4 Beach Paradise wasn't big enough. 